guys, welcome to Rotor Riot. My name is Ladrib, and today we're gonna be building another quad. We're gonna be basing this build around a lot of the products that we've come out with over the past year, including the CL1 frame, ride control flight controller, new set of hype train motors, I'm a grip. So we've got all sorts of cool things. The CL1 frame, community led, we took a lot of input from the community provided to us through our various social media platforms and tried to integrate it into this frame. So you've got cool features like support for both 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 flight boards, additional 20 by 20 uh, mounting provisions in the rear, five millimeter thick carbon, press nuts, all these features packed into a frame that we priced to be really budget friendly. So this is gonna be a really basic canvas that's gonna be an awesome platform for a simple, clean builds. Throughout this build, we're gonna be covering some tips, tricks, and hacks for uh, for our specific products, but also just good build practices. So uh, check the description for some timestamps. If you're looking for uh, a specific tip, you might find it down there. The motors we're gonna be using are the new Hype Train 2207s. It's called the Acro Motor. It has a good mid KV of 2450. We've got a new extra durable bell design that still has got the cool tri-spoke look to it. We've got the Race Day Quads video transmitter with an MMCX connector, and that's gonna be really great with this Lumineer antenna because it has an MMCX connector right on it. So we'll be able to plug this antenna right into the video transmitter, keep things nice, neat, and clean. My go-to DYS ESCs, a whole bunch of Brain 3D mounts. Oh, and we're also gonna be putting on these these little skid little skiddies. So these go on the bottom of the arm. It's really durable and it's gonna hold up well to scraping on the ground as you do the skids, give you something to land on. Let's start by putting the frame together. So your CL1 kit comes with with four arms, as you might expect with a quadcopter, a bottom plate, sandwich plate to hold the arms on, a top plate, and just some basic 3D printed mounts for your camera. Like I said, super simple frame. You'll notice that the base plate has press nuts. So that's gonna make assembly easy and clean, but I definitely recommend using Loctite with this stuff, and I hate Loctite, it just, look, it's already on me. It's already, it just smells, it just gets everywhere. I'm just gonna squirt some right in the press nuts. It's a really good idea to use it, but I just, I just hate it. Got your hardware kit. So this comes with a bunch of screws and blue standoffs here. The screws for the arms are the long ones, right? There's two sizes, I think it's eight millimeters and 10 millimeters. So just start separating out the long ones. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the screw up through the lower stiffener plate. The kind of long direction of this X lines up with front to back of the frame. And these arm protector things will also go front to back. So this is gonna line up like that, there we go. The hardest one to do is always just kind of getting the sandwich started. But once you have one of these screws in place, it gets a lot easier because you don't have to hold everything together. So I'm just gonna loosely get it in there, just enough to kind of hold things in place. Grab another long one. There you go, now it's super easy. The arms also interlock in the middle, so you'll feel it mate up against the adjacent arms and that's gonna keep things stiff and make things a little more durable. With all four arms in place and these screws just kind of in there, we're gonna work our way around all these arm screws and get them tightened up. So let's go ahead and put the flight controller on our frame and then we will work from the motors back toward the flight controller. So we've got our riot control board. While we go through this build, I wanna take the opportunity to answer some questions that we uh, commonly get about our products. For this board, something that people have been asking is how hard is it to replace the gyro because we did design this around a removable soft mounted gyro case. So you're gonna be able to remove this gyro and replace it with a new one if you damage it in a crash or if you wanna upgrade or change to a different gyro because we will have more gyro options coming out. I have here a replacement gyro. This isn't any uh, any fancy gyro or anything like that. It's just another stock gyro. But I just wanna show you how you do the replacement. All you're gonna need are some tweezers. I love having tweezers for builds and I've got some ceramic tipped ones that are really nice. So throughout the build, you'll see me using this. And what's nice about the ceramic tip is ceramic is non-conductive. So it doesn't matter if I'm touching the, uh, the circuitry, I'm not gonna cause a short and damage anything. And I'm gonna flip up this little black clip right there. And that's gonna free the ribbon cable, which you're gonna find on the underside of the gyro. As you can see, the ribbon cable passes through the board and connects on the underside. So with that black piece flipped up, we can then take tweezers and just gently work the ribbon cable out. And then with that free, 
Now we can unscrew the gyro. Okay, so there's just four little Phillips head screws, little screws, and then with that, you should be able to pull the gyro off. So here we've got the gyro that it came with, and we've got our new gyro. Um, the four screws are still in the board. I mean, they, they will come out, so if they fall, just make sure not to lose them. To put on the new gyro, you want to slide the ribbon cable through the slot, and the gyro sits right on top of the processor chip. So this is your gyro in its acrylic case. There's your processor chip. So you just set it on top of there, holding it from the underside. And then I'm gonna drop the screws back into flight board. And we're just gonna loosely get them in there. Just give them like one full turn in there just to hold it in place. And we'll just get all four in place. All right, and then once you have all four screws loosely threaded into the acrylic case, just double check that it's seated correctly, isn't sitting at any sort of weird angle, and then go ahead and just gently work the screws in. You don't wanna over tighten it because you could strip out the case, just snug them up. And the last thing to do is to plug in the new ribbon cable, so make sure that that black flap is still lifted. We're gonna take our tweezers and really carefully line up the cable. So see the, the metal contacts? Those should fold over and be facing the board. You just wanna gently push it in there You'll feel it slide into place. Just push down the black clip and your new gyro is installed. I would definitely recommend that before you uh, go any further, plug this into your computer, open up Betaflight and see that the gyro is responding. Just in case you have the ribbon cable seated incorrectly or something like that, it's easier with the, uh, the board separate. So now let's get into the hardware pack that comes with the flight board. In the hardware pack, you've got your soft mount gummies got a soft mounted gyro and a soft mounted board. I've really been enjoying having the two layers of physical dampening. Oh, all right, you're officially getting locked up. And we're just gonna put these soft mount gummies in the corners of our flight board. All right, with the gummies in there, let's see how low we can mount this thing because those are gonna give us a little bit of height. We've got to clear the press nuts, so we've got nylon, nuts and a small nylon standoff. I think it's like three millimeters high. What I like to do, go into my little hardware kit, I like to use a little bit longer of a screw and just thread all the way through. So I take my female, female uh, nylon standoff, thread it down on this longer screw. Don't over tighten it. All right. And then what you'll do is you're gonna do that on all four corners. You'll set the flight board down, and then we've got more thread poking up, and then we'll just drop the nylon screw on there. Throughout the build, what you wanna think about though is how are things gonna to fit together. You don't wanna use a screw so long that it interferes with the top plate. The stock standoffs are 30 millimeters, so we've got plenty of clearance there, but what I might wanna do is actually lower the top plate, and we'll come back to that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll still have room. Yeah, I think I'm using 16 millimeter screws. That will give you two millimeters to go through the bottom plate, plus three or four millimeters for the nylon, plus another three millimeters for the, uh, the rubber grommet, and another millimeter or so for the nylon nut, and then you'll still have some threads left over. All right, so we've got our four 16 millimeter screws, our four small nylon standoffs, and we're just gonna drop our board down. Oh, you know what? I almost put it backwards. There is an arrow on the board facing forward. I mean, you can mount it either way and then remap things in Betaflight, but it does make things easier if you just line up the board the way it should go. So the end of the frame that has the additional 20 by 20 holes, as well as some extra holes for zip tying some things down, that's in the back. So you want your arrow pointed toward the side that's more blank. And now we're going to work from the motors through the ESCs back to the flight board with our soldering. Let's kind of loosely feel out how things are gonna lay out. We've got our motor, I'm gonna grab an ESC. So the ESC is gonna sit on the arm what I want to see is how much wire length should I leave on the motor. So, you know, what, I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the motors to be about like two fingers wide. We'll solder the ESC to it. Then when we lay it down, we'll have this length of wire to get to the flight board. So the screws that come with the motor for this build, we're not going to use them because those screws are six millimeters long, which are really good for most standard frames that have four millimeter arms. But because we went with the extra durable five millimeter thick arms, you're gonna need to use slightly longer screws. All right, I've got all four motors cut to the length I want. And we're just gonna give them a little strip. You just wanna strip off like a little bit. Look at that, just a bit. And now 
we're going to pre-tin them all just using these this handle here all four sets of motor wires kind of up in the air and i'm just going to run around with a soldering iron got my trusty ts100 it's going to plug right into hypo lipo 390 degrees celsius when you're soldering it's really important to keep a clean tip a lot of soldering stations come with a sponge that you wet and then clean your tip that way i actually much prefer to use this type of tip cleaner it's just like stringy metal in a container um, and I used to think that this was more damaging to the tip because you're like scraping it. But the truth is hitting your tip with a wet sponge actually thermally shocks your soldering tip and you'll do more uh, damage to it quickly doing that rather than actually just scraping it in the metal. So either works, but I prefer this. So let's coat it with some fresh solder. So I'm just holding the soldering iron on one side of the wire and then feeding solder into the other side. You don't want to overdo it. Basically get the strands to keep from splitting apart. I actually noticed I was a little bit less than consistent in my stripping. So if you look here, that's kind of the amount that I want to have stripped and that's a little bit longer. Uh, what I'd recommend doing is pre-tinning the longer amount and then you can actually just trim off the excess. It's still tinned all the way through and now it matches better. Got the motors prepared. Now we're just gonna grab all four ESCs and we're now gonna pre-tin the ESCs all together again, assembly line style. You can touch the iron to the pad and feed solder in. So that one's a little bit messy. If it's a little bit messy, you can add some solder to your tip and then just go back in here and kind of clean it up. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're just gonna hit it with more heat in a little bit anyway. Now this is gonna sound like I'm over explaining, but something I like to think about is which way do the tools come in? For example, if I solder this side first, and when I go to do the next one, my tweezer is gonna interfere with the one behind it. Whereas if I come in from this side to this side, I'll keep a clean path as I go. All I'm doing is I'm taking the pre-tinned wire end, holding it on top of the pre-tinned solder pad, just kind of fusing them together, holding the heat on so that the solder goes congruent. Probably good to clean and retin the solder tip in between every ESC set. I've got all four motor and ESC sets. Let's just bolt them onto the arms. Now I've got some accessories that come into play. So I mentioned I want to use these skids. And then among all the cool pink accessories that Brain 3D sent, they sent arm protectors. I usually don't use these but I don't know, let's try something different. So I think what we need are 10 millimeter screws. So what you want is a screw that's long enough that it passes through all of our accessories and the arm, but not so much that it goes all the way through and touches the winding. If the screw is touching the winding, you're gonna have a short to the conductive carbon fiber uh, damage the winding. So just be careful of that. And it's gonna be pretty easy to see because our hype train motors don't have that bottom that, that older style motors used to have. We're gonna go through our 3D printed thing and through the arm. And I see a lot of pilots only use two screws on their motors. I like to use all four. It's like not that much weight and it's gonna just make your build a little bit more robust. All right, so I've got pretty much all four motors mounted. I just like to kind of pull the wires to where they're gonna be and just kind of cut them on spot. Red positive wire goes to the big V plus pad meant for your ESC power. So we'll just kind of loop it around like that. I want to give it like enough slack so that it's got some like strain relief. There we go. Do the other side. And then we'll see what we'll do with our signal. It's signal ground. I think I'll just kind of loop it around in front there. I'll cut it like that long. I like to leave, again, a little extra slack. I always end up doing the lipo lead kind of toward the end because it kind of gets in the way. But, you know, there is a case to be made for putting the lipo lead on earlier and along the way, plugging things in and making sure everything is all right. But in this case, after I'm done cutting all the uh, ESC wires to length, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so then as I do each ESC and each peripheral, like the camera and the video transmitter, I can keep plugging it in to see if, uh, if a problem gets created along the way. All right, so let's get this power lead on. Again, try to visualize how the build is gonna look. So what I could do is I could cut the lead really short and just solder it like that and the battery could plug in. Or 
I like to do is leave more length and then bring it up around the side and then hold, hold the lead to the side of a battery with the strap and then kind of plug it in from behind there. So we're gonna cut it a little bit longer. I'm gonna turn up my soldering iron power because these are thicker wires. So same concept as with the smaller wire, but you might have difficulty getting the heat to uh, transfer through as easily. So I'm holding the iron on one side of the wire and I'm kind of touching the solder to the iron itself to get it going and then bringing the solder around to the other side so that it flows through the wire toward the iron. And then we'll just kind of massage, massage it with the, the tip there to make it look good. I've got a little solder on one side so we'll use gravity. We'll hold the bubble side up, add some heat on the other side, bring it through. You don't need to have too much on there. That's good. And I'll just do the same for the negative side. So the battery solder pads on our flight board, it's got like this, this semicircle shape to it. So you can sit the wire right in the semicircle. So I wanna find something that I can kind of prop the, prop the quad up like that. And then I'm just gonna hold the wire to the side of the crescent and flow it together. So. Beautiful. So this little gizmo right here is a smoke stopper, as they call it, and if you've got a short, it should prevent components from being too damaged. It's not a guarantee, but uh, if you don't have a multimeter, or if you're being lazy and I don't want to go upstairs and get my multimeter, you can use that. So all we have soldered on so far is the lipo lead, and we're just going to make sure that the flight controller is good. So there's that. Yeah, we got a green light. We have all of the initialization light sequencing from the LEDs on the board itself, so the board is good. Now we're just gonna do each ESC, and again, along the way, plug it in and see that it's working out good. So just as we've been doing all along the way, we pre-tin the wire. Watch out for that, that just happened there. What I did, I was holding the soldering iron on the, wi the wire from the underside and it slipped off and the wire flung down and solder flicked off the wire. Luckily it wasn't over anything and it just flicked onto my metal table. But if I had the wire over another electrical component and solder gets flicked down onto that electrical component, you could short out something and have a bad time. So be really careful to, I mean, just in general, try to keep yourself from doing uh, soldering over other electrical components because you don't want anything falling down. But wires are pre-tinned, pads are pre-tinned. We're just gonna do like we've been doing. So now that I'm doing the signal and signal ground wire, I'm gonna look at which way the wires are coming from. And I'm gonna bring it in like this. So the signal ground wire, which is on the outside of the board, is going to run over the signal wire. So I'm going to do the signal wire first, if that makes sense. So you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So first I lay down the signal wire and then now the signal ground wire runs over the signal wire. Look at that. And it just sits like that. Looks good. So we've got one ESC and motor set, solder to the flight board, the Red power wire goes to the big V plus solder pad. The black ground wire goes to the big V minus solder pad. The white signal wire goes to uh, S4 in this case, because it's motor number four. And the small black signal ground wire goes to the small minus pad. So we've got one done. So smoke stopper on, plug it in. We got our initialization beeps from the ESC and our initi initialization LEDs on the flight board. So let's just do the other three. We got all four motors and ESCs hooked up to the flight board. Let's give it one more plug in test. Looking good. So with the soldering that you're doing at the corner is done. Now's a good time to put on the nylon nuts that will actually hold down the flight board. I didn't do that earlier so that I'd have uh, more room to work on the corners without running the risk of melting my nylon pieces. But let's do it now before we move on too far and forget. When you're tightening, tightening down the flight board, you wanna tighten it so it 
just starts to snug up and you get the rubber grommets in the corners under a little bit of compression, but you don't want to squish them too badly. So again, I just want all of them to just be snugged. All right, so I want to move on to some other components. So let's put some thought into how our antennas are going to lay out and again, work from the antennas inward. So we've got these cool mounts. We've got a couple different options here. Uh, like with this one, we could hold your receiver antennas here, and then you have an SMA hole. Uh, this one, you could hold a, a T-style antenna in this ring and then another SMA hole. But I want to use this one, so we've got our two antenna holders here, and then this is going to fit perfectly with our Lumineer Axi. So check this out. We feed the connector in. And then the antenna will fit into that holder. It just looks cool. I like that a lot. So I want to mount that antenna and then figure out where the uh, video transmitter is going to sit in relation. So let's grab our standoffs. And something else I like about the Brain 3D design is that it's actually only 20 millimeters tall, so you can still use it with the standard standoffs, but if you want to slam it down, which we will try to do later, um, you've got some room to do that. So we've got our short screws and those thread up through the carbon into the standoff. All right, and we still gotta worry about the receiver antennas. I guess we'll feed them into the uh, antenna holder. And we want our video transmitter and our receiver to be in this back area, but I don't know exactly how it's gonna lay out yet. So let's grab our video transmitter. This is our Mach 2. Ray State quads, plug in our antenna. Well, I think with the amount of slack that we have on the antenna connector, we don't really have an option. So the video transmitter has to pretty much sit there. I think, yeah, I think we'll do it like that. We'll just have the receiver just behind the video transmitter. So let's get our video transmitter taped down. But what I wanna do before that is I wanna take our leads and solder them to the video transmitter because something that's kind of cool about the Mach 2 is they just give you solder pads so you're not worried about a connector on your video transmitter. But we just need to figure out exactly which ones we're using. All right, we've got four wires, we've got orange is going to be our power, yellow is going to be our video signal, black will be our ground, and then we'll use the green wire to the audio of the video transmitter and then that will hook up to um, a telemetry pad up front. This is a nice video transmitter though. I really like the solder pads. The MMCX connector is gonna be more durable and robust than the uh, smaller UF.L. The onboard microphone to make audio a little easier if that's something you wanna fly with. And an actual segmented LED display, so should relieve some confusion about what channel am I on? Hmm? Got our wires connected. I'm just gonna run that under the flight board. Red double-sided tape. This is like body tape I got from the automotive store. It's strong. So now we're just lining everything up, getting our antenna extension routed with a good clean bend there, making sure the video transmitter is not gonna overlap the standoff holes. Just push down. Now I wanna double check that we're not gonna have interference in the standoff, so let's go ahead and install two of those. Ooh, it's pretty close, but we are good. And let's get our second row back pair of standoffs installed. The next thing we wanna place is our Joshua Bardwell Rotor Riot Run Cam Micro Eagle Pro V2. We've got a couple of different options for getting our camera mounted. We've got 3D printed mounts that come with the frame kit, and these are gonna slide over your front standoffs. Look how this goes together. The way you're gonna want it is so that they flare out wide, and that's gonna give you a mounting provision for a full-size camera. So for example, we've got this full-size camera, and that would fit in that spot like so. Now, we've got our micro camera. And if we try to put it in here, we actually run into a problem. The way that this bracket sticks out forward makes it interfere with the arm end of the camera mount. So you actually can't really fit it onto the mount that it comes with. We've got a little bit of a hack for that. Check out this little hack. All you do is move these mounts backwards like that and slide it over the rear set of standoffs. 
as I've been saying, we're going to try and slam this build down and use a uh, standoff shorter than the stock standoff. So I've got a eagle here without the adapter bracket, and I've got a custom mount that is going to let me screw directly onto the micro camera and then slide over the front standoffs. So if you're going all out on your build and want to do custom stuff, you can get cool mounts like this from Brain 3D. All the stuff that they've sent along for the antennas and you'll see for the GoPro and for this micro camera lets you kind of customize this build to be um, be different than it would be just out of the box. So with our custom 3D printed mount in place, we can slide that over. That's looking beautiful. Cool. All right, also included with our Rotorad Edition Runcam Micro Eagle, you get this little guy. This is the Runcam UART control adapter. So we're gonna be able to use our, our sticks on our transmitter to send commands to our camera to change camera settings. So that's helpful if you're flying in really different lighting conditions like cloudy, overcast, or twilight, whatever, and you wanna tweak your camera settings without having to uh, plug in the extra adapter that it comes with, you can do it right with your stick. So this is a really cool piece. So on one end you've got this two wire plug, and this is gonna go to the menu output and to the ground, so that our solder up there. And then we've just got four loose wires took up to power, ground, uh, transmitting, and receiving UART. So it's pretty easy to set up on the back side. They've got all the pads labeled, so you know exactly what goes to what. So we've got the two plug harness, the blue wire going to the menu, and the black wire going to the ground. Then we've got our loose wires, red is five volt, black is ground, green is TX, orange is RX. We'll give those a little bit of a twist. Now we need to figure out what UART is this gonna talk to. UART one, we're gonna set up to use for our receiver. And UART three, that's where we're gonna hook up this control adapter board to. All right, let's place this. So we've got plenty of room up here, so I'm just gonna stick that down. Now, the camera comes with some double-sided tape, so that's nice and convenient, so we don't have to bother cutting up the stuff I've been using. Stick it on there. So yeah, we identified that we're gonna use a UART on the rear. We're also gonna have a uh, five volt in the ground that we can use back there. So we're just gonna feed all four wires under yon flight board. Stick this down, push and hold. And now here's the other wire that comes with the camera. This is our positive ground and video. So we will also plug this into the camera. I like to just plug in the, the lead and then just kind of loosely route it to where it's going to be soldered. So the, the pads are right here for our camera. So we can just kind of hold it and then pull a little bit more to give it slack, cut it. There you go. We've got our video transmitter placed. We've got our camera in place. We've got our camera control board in place. We've got our receiver loose because I want to get that soldered before we tape it down. But basically all the other components are in no, he got out. He got out. And we can start soldering up the smaller wires to the uh, the flight board. So, so right up front, we've got ground, 9 volt, and camera. So we're just going to pretend those. The yellow is going to, it's labeled camera. So we label it so there's no confusion. But on other flight boards, that might be labeled video in because the video is going from the camera into the flight board. And then for the video transmitter, be video out because it's going from the flight board to the video transmitter but we just labeled it cam and vtx and anyway in case you haven't done one of these boards before the reason we're hooking up the video signal to the flight board is because this flight board features an onboard on-screen display so we will do pid tuning and see status and all sorts of cool stuff so then coming out from under the flight board up front we've got our video transmitter wires um, got a fair amount of length there so we're just going to fold it over Again, loosely to where it's going to be soldered, giving it some slack. So our four wires are, again, power, ground, video, and telemetry, which they've labeled audio. So I'm pre the flight board. I'm pre the ground, the 9 volt, the VTX. And then right next to the VTX pad, there's a pad labeled TX6. TX6 and RX6 are the two pads that allow you to talk to UART6. I forget exactly what it stands for, but it's basically the component on the flight board that lets 
your processor talk to other things. And each UART has a transmitter and a receiver. So think about what we're gonna be doing. You're gonna send a signal from your radio through the receiver to the flight board. Then the flight board has to tell the video transmitter what to do. So the flight board is going to transmit a signal to the video transmitter. So that's why you're going to use the TX pin because you are transmitting in this case. All right, everything that we're gonna to solder to the front row should be all hooked up. Camera, video transmitter, let's go around back. So now in the back row, we're gonna be hooking up our receiver and we're gonna be hooking up our camera control board. A question that we got is how do you use a FreeSky receiver and get the receiver command into the flight board as well as get telemetry out from the flight board to the receiver. Now we only have three UARTs and only one of the inputs, one of the, one of the receiver pads is actually inverted. So there isn't a second inverted UART for you to get your telemetry out to your receiver. The only additional UART we have anyway we're going to use for the camera control board. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of custom soft serial setup in Betaflight to allow us to uh, get receiver commands into the flight board and telemetry output from the flight board all on one UART. For the receiver wire, for the SBUS wire, you're going to hook it up like normal. And that, if you're familiar with this board, is going to require you to bridge two pads right here because SBUS is inverted, whereas other um, receivers send a uh, non-inverted signal. So what we've bridged is we've bridged this B pad with S bus. You can see it really clearly on the wiring diagram right up here, B and S bus. So if you were using Spectrum or Crossfire, you would bridge B and DSM, but we're using S bus, so we bridge B and S bus. And then we are gonna hook up our S bus wire to RX1 inverted right there. Ground, five volt, and the S bus wire is hooked up to RX1 inverted. Now this last wire, this is your S port wire, and we are gonna hook it up to TX1. So our receiver is good to go. Now the last thing that we need to hook up are these wires coming out the back, and this is for your camera control board. So we're gonna grab five volt ground, and we're gonna use both the TX and the RX. Now if you recall, the control board had a TX and an RX pad of its own. I took a picture of the back of it because I knew once we stuck it down, I wasn't gonna be able to uh, see the wires anymore and I didn't wanna forget what color. So five volt was red, ground was black, and then I hooked up the green wire to the TX of the control board. So now the TX of the camera control board is gonna transmit to the RX of the flight control board. So it's a little bit confusing at first that you hook up the TX to the RX, and then of course that would mean that the RX of the camera control board would talk to the TX of the flight control board. So we're gonna grab the green wire and we are gonna attach it to RX3. And we're gonna grab the orange wire, which is hooked up to the RX of the camera control board and we're gonna hook that up to the TX of the flight control board. And then lastly, power and ground is normal. See how we do? Everything seems to be fine. The flight board is initializing. We got all the confirmation tones from the ESCs. We got the video transmitter powered on and telling us what channel we're transmitting on. We've got a receiver blinking all pissed off at us because we're not bound. We've got an LED on the camera control where we got everything looks to be fine. So of course there's still setup to do, but we've still got some, some things we need to do to button up the physical build. As I mentioned many times, I've been trying to keep the build as low as possible because what I wanted to do was grab my little bag of 20 millimeter standoffs and get that slammed down. So we've got tons of space. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna pull off the stock standoffs and I'm gonna throw on my short standoffs. All right, we've got all our standoffs in place. Let's do another test fit of the top plate. Make sure everything is clearing. Camera's a little bit tight. We're just gonna have to push it down. Look at that, that is looking really good. All right, before we screw it down, we still have to get our receiver taped down. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna kind of plop it on top of the video transmitter. Not ideal, but it'll get the job done. 
I might want to try to avoid covering up the button or the display, but honestly, I'm only ever really gonna use the Betaflight on-screen display to change the settings and see the status of my video transmitter. So I don't really need it. Let's get the top plate actually bolted down. Now you'll notice I haven't attached anything to the top plate. We did put these just big slots in the top plate so that you could add zip ties or Velcro straps or whatever you want if you want to hold something to the underside of the top plate. And there are these smaller slots in the rear so that if you want to have your antenna coming out the rear like that, you could put that somewhere there and then just zip tie it down. But Dude, I, I just don't like doing that stuff. I'd rather spend a little bit more to get some of these 3D printed things that hold the antennas in good positions and keep the top plate free from stuff being attached to it. The reason I really like the top plate to not have anything attached to it is because it makes serviceability much better. When you have to take the top plate off, you unbolt it and it just lifts off like the hood of a car. It's not like you lift it off and it's like, oh, oh God, I have to untape this thing or, or unplug it or, or whatever, or clip the zip tie. And then when you put it back on, you have to worry about that. It's just, uh, just goes on nice and easy. I'm gonna grab one of my GoPro mounts. I would love to put this session mount on because I love the GoPro session, but I ain't got no sessions because I broke them all and they're discontinued. So we're gonna be using this gargantuan hero shaped mount so we can put my hero five or six in there let's do something about these escs right now they're just on the arms they're flopping all over the place you could take some tape and just tape them down um, you could use the included esc covers that's a really nice thing that they include but these aren't that durable and what the covers really should be doing is protecting your esc from prop strikes if your prop gets bent down it's going to hit your esc that's going to rip off surface mount components cause all sorts of damage so these do an okay job but they break pretty quickly i've tried using these so what we've got over here are some busted up props i pulled out of the back of my truck so we're going to cut sections of my props we're going to upcycle these dead props into ESC covers. And we'll just put the, look at that, that fits really nicely. It's like the perfect width. We're gonna put that down on top of the ESC. We're gonna tape it down and it's, these ESCs are never gonna get damaged. So let's just make four of those things. These ESCs have an LED on them, which when you go into BL Heli 32 configurator, you can set the color of that LED. It doesn't do anything other than look cool, but don't cover up your bling. So I've made sure to use props that are semi-transparent. Light will pass through them. I'm gonna set it there and then I'm gonna make sure that the electrical tape that I put on doesn't cover the LED. Woo, look at that, look at that. All right, all right, all right. Um, seeing the antenna sticking out here, we should protect those. Got our antenna tube. We'll just cut it to length. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it. I'm gonna pull the antenna out as far as it can go. Hold the antenna tube alongside it. Mark it with my thumb, cut it. We'll take that piece. Oh yeah, the Uma Grip, super sticky battery pad. Right on, right on the nose, Tommy. Right on the nose. All right, got a little piece here. We're gonna stick that. Unfortunately, covering up our pretty skull logo. Let's give it the old. Oh yeah, come on, come on. But just because it does stick, doesn't mean that'd fly without a strap. So, got some dribby straps. This build is done. All we have left to do is plug it into Betaflight, set up the flight board, pop a GoPro in here, get some props on, and it is ready to rip. So thank you guys for joining me in building this quad. Hopefully you learned something, picked up some tips and tricks along the way. Leave a comment with what's the most frustrating part of building a drone for you. Uh, and if you have any hacks or whatever, include that as well. I always love learning new little tricks to make the build cleaner, easier, quicker, whatever. Link in the description to all the parts we use on this build in the description store.rotoriot.com you can get everything we used here so let's get this quad in the air and rip